Now I want to start off by saying that I know to many this might seem basic and well it is but hopefully you can open your mind to perceiving these concepts in a new way. We have become so overcomplicated with our personalities that we've lost sight of the most fundamental attributes of our own consciousness. This video will go over chakras, what they are, how you can balance them, and potential dangers associated with opening chakras too quickly. We will finish the video with a guided meditation in 432 Hz that will truly assist the process for those who have never felt the sensations of opening chakras. Again, if this seems new age to you, just give it a chance. Just take a breath and try to understand why these concepts may be important before proceeding into more advanced spiritual techniques. So, what are chakras? In order to understand chakras, we need to first understand what is our body. The education system teaches that the human body is simply an evolutionary physical process that is constructed through coincidence. No wonder it's easy to assume that chakras are simply a bunch of new age hoopla, but in the occult tradition, as we have covered in multiple videos on our channel, man is not seen as simply a physical process, but that he is a hierarchy of spiritual planes, that we have multiple bodies on each of these spiritual planes, the top being the Godhead. We have also gone over the concept of the Nephilim, the fallen ones, or the planets, and how they came down and merged with man. This is a spiritual allegory for the different spiritual energies that make up our body. These are the different attributes of God. These different energies are what make up our realm, our bodies, and our minds. Now chakras are basically whirlpools of energy within our body, and each one of these wheels, or pools of energy, are connected to one of these spiritual attributes of God. Or in other words, the planets, or Nephilim, or astrology, connect through different portals in your body. Now when a person becomes unbalanced, or too intense in one particular attribute, it's most likely because one of these chakras are either underactive or overactive. For example, someone who may be severely addicted to a substance most likely has their heart chakra out of balance, or they don't show love to themselves or their passion enough and are depriving themselves of self-love. It doesn't have to necessarily be something so bad, it could be someone who is too focused on one thing. Too much passion can be a bad thing. Maybe your sacral chakras are overactive and it's causing damage to your other chakras. Regardless of the issue, we need to be able to seek balance in order to channel the cosmic energy into our bodies. By cosmic energy, I mean pure consciousness. This pure consciousness is what leads to higher states of being and experience, but one must learn to unblock themselves. Imagine that these chakras all lead into one another. They're connected. So you have pure consciousness or water that comes down the stream and then hits the first whirlpool, your crown chakra, and then continues into each consecutive pool of energy. But as you can imagine, as the stream continues to flow through these different pools of energy, different materials like grass, rocks, and residue may block the stream from continuing into the next whirlpool. It becomes dirty. This is a blocked chakra and it blocks this pure consciousness from entering into your lower chakras. If you clean this residue, then the stream shall flow again, and each pool of energy will be balanced. The residue in this analogy are our everyday thoughts, emotions, and actions. Over time, we build up residue within these spiritual energies. They become tainted by fear, trauma, guilt, and disbelief in one's self and purpose. In order to gain sovereignty over your own consciousness and power, you must learn to tap into this pure consciousness. In order to become a magus, or avatar, the master of all elements, you must learn to balance these pools of energy, to let go of the residue that blocks the pure consciousness from entering. Many people are truly not aware of the amount of fear and anxiety that they hold within themselves. This is why many in this realm are asleep. They have blocked their pools of energy and they do not receive higher wisdom from the pure light that is consciousness. You must become aware of your darkness if you wish to see the light. So how do we balance them? It's actually easier than you think, so much so that it makes people laugh, hence the new age comments. But if one was to enter the simplicity that is pure consciousness, or to silence the ego, then there would be no question whether this experience is a reality or not. You can actually prove it to yourself through sensation. Your chakras will vibrate, 
And I'm not talking slightly or you're not sure if you feel it type of vibrating. No, more like, oh my God, what is happening right now type of vibrating, especially if you're new to this or if you doubt the existence of these spiritual energies. For all one needs to do is simply silence the mind, enter a state of meditation where you fully have control of your mind. You must control whether thoughts enter or not. You are not governed by your mind for you are not your mind. You are consciousness. For many, this is not achievable, but focus is of the utmost importance. You must learn to focus your mind on these different pools of energy. If you've seen other videos on our channel, we go over the golden ball ritual where you can visualize a golden ball of light and use it to relax the different areas of your body. What you're doing is you're putting your consciousness on the different parts of your body and then willing that part to go to sleep. Well, in a similar scenario, we are now going to think about the area where the root chakra lies, the root chakra is positioned at the bottom of the spine. The better you can visualize, the more powerful this experience will be. If you can't visualize yourself from a mirror's point of view, then simply just try to imagine that your consciousness, the consciousness that is inside of your head, is moved to the base of your spine. Try to imagine what would it feel like if your head was at the base of your spine, if that helps. Now, you want to imagine that there is a red wheel, or a red flower, or whatever visual works for you, and imagine that this wheel is spinning at the base of your spine. Now, depending on your situation, it may be overactive, or it may be underactive. Underactive may be slower and smaller, and overactive, it may be spinning too fast or too large. But in order to even get to this stage where you can decipher the health of your chakra, you need to have pinpoint focus, and you must understand your psyche. You must know whether or not this part of yourself is flawed. You must be real with yourself. The root chakra represents your connection with this material realm. Are you detached from reality? Too lost in fantasy land and many of the times you aren't very realistic on how things should be done? Do you need to give more priority to obligations? Your root chakra may be underactive. Or are you too material and you're getting lost in the true value of life? Are you attached to money and greed? Are you a shallow person and fail to be genuine? Then you may have an overactive root chakra. Now you have three problems. An underactive chakra, an overactive chakra, and then a block chakra. Sometimes the underactive chakra is not actually the problem, but it is that there's a block in one of these pools from above. Maybe your heart chakra is blocked. You can't truly love yourself, therefore the stream becomes blocked and only a small stream is left to continue down into your lower chakras. But in a way, an underactive chakra becomes a block chakra because it's not at its full potential. Just something to keep in mind. Let's go over the main attributes for each chakra so that when we enter the meditation, you will be more prepared for working with these different spiritual centers. The next chakra up is the sacral chakra. The sacral chakra is located near the genitalia or bladder. It represents pleasure, intimacy, creativity, and passion. This chakra easily gets blocked by fear. If you're feeling shame, guilt, self-depression, you most likely have a blocked sacral chakra. Next is the solar plexus chakra. Located above the navel, this solar plexus is the sun within you. It is associated with fire. It represents will, energy, the pursuit of goals, and instinct. This chakra may be blocked if you can't be real with yourself or others. Can you make a definitive statement? Do you know what you want and state it to the universe clearly? If not, you may need to work on your solar plexus. Now we come to the heart chakra. Located in the chest, a truly balanced heart chakra in oneself will lead you to become unhurt, unbeaten, for it represents true love for oneself. It is associated with balance, serenity, and true love for oneself and others. If you fail to love yourself, then you need to get to the root of the problem. Try balancing your heart chakra and may the answer come so that you may become unstruck by pain and suffering. Next is the throat chakra, which lies in the pit of the throat. This chakra is known to be the purification center for it represents creativity and self-expression. This is what allows you to communicate in this realm, to express yourself, or to turn the higher consciousness that enters you into positive or negative experience. The feeling of guilt is usually what leads to the throat chakra becoming blocked. By meditating on this chakra, it is said that occult powers follow, one being your ability to express yourself in other spiritual realms, or in other words, your ability to navigate the astral. The next chakra is the sixth chakra, and it is the most famous one known as the third eye chakra. This chakra can be made more powerful simply by meditation or even by watching videos that stimulate your subconscious mind as this one does. This chakra represents perception. Ajna, the Hindu name for this chakra means authority or command. It represents your intuition and intellect. 
One of the main occult powers from opening the third eye is the power to quickly enter your astral body at will. This chakra is your subconscious mind. It takes all the energy from the environment and carries it downstream. Therefore, you must take great care to protect it. If you lack internal vision or your awareness or perception is suffering, you may have a closed third eye, for this is the portal to receiving higher wisdom. You must learn to unblock this chakra if you wish to find balance. The final chakra is the crown chakra. This chakra is your connection with divinity. It is the center that channels the cosmic pure energy of consciousness as it feeds down into the lower chakras. All chakras emulate from this crown chakra. If you are blocking this crown chakra, you may be disconnected to the divinity within you. Do you believe yourself to be a purely physical being? Do you believe you are just a product of evolution that happened by randomness? If so, you have disconnected yourself from your higher consciousness. You think that all there is is this physical realm, and most likely you think in terms of proof and data. Take a breath, look within, or your senses can provide you with the data you need. You are looking in the wrong places for answers. Calm the mind and go to the roots of your thoughts. Break yourself down. Come to terms with what your consciousness is. Then you may unblock your chakra and experience this divinity for yourself. We have now covered the basics of chakras. And no, you don't need to know much more than that, or at least you shouldn't. Just try to keep things as simple as possible. You will know you're successful once you feel them vibrating. That doesn't mean you solved the issue. It just means you're connecting with your chakras and you can now sense them. Once you can feel them, then you must take the journey to cleanse them. And you must not rush these things. As I warned at the beginning, there are dangers associated with this. No, it has nothing to do with demons. Most Christians reject this information because they refuse to learn about how their own consciousness works. For some reason, they see it as evil. You don't have to use occult powers. No one's making you do anything. Start simple and learn to balance your mind. But the true danger is this. If you start opening parts of yourself that you aren't ready for, it's going to cause more damage. Say you jump the gun and decide to just open your third eye because, you know, you want to know what it's like to have visions or go into the astral realm. Well, what if your heart chakra is blocked? What if your sacral chakra is blocked? What you will do in this situation is open a flood of energy from your chakra, yet you still have blockages within yourself. Your guilt, fear, anxiety, will manifest in horrible visions. And sure, you may think you opened a portal to demons, but all you've done is opened up yourself. Be honest, this is all happening within your psyche. Nothing can harm you but yourself. Your dirty, nasty, spiritual blockages will mix with this flood and create basically a mud flood. You don't want to enter the astral realm with these blockages, as I headed towards in the Astral Plane Explained series. Emotions and thoughts manifest instantly so as you can imagine, opening your third eye will be horrible if you have blockages, especially because if one is not careful, the visions will not stop. You will have opened a portal in which you can't close and you are stuck in your own mess. It will be very difficult to clean yourself in this position. This doesn't have to be the case for every person, it just depends. Have you had trauma? Then be careful, you still have demons you need to face. If you feel confident, then do what your gut tells you. But that should give you a good base structure so that you can start working on your spiritual energies within yourself. Hopefully, you can see this from a new perspective. It's not this channel's intention to start a new journey of basically creating new age spiritual videos that everybody already has common knowledge of, but instead, to create a path that the magus can follow that will lead to more advanced practices. But without the theory, without the fundamentals, and the diligent practice, one should not even attempt to even begin pursuing more complex forms of magic until they've gone over the basics. Now we begin the practice portion. The next video will be the guided meditation. Relax your mind, relax your body, take a seat, and let us begin. Let go of everything you think to be true. Relax the mind and ask the question, do I truly understand what this reality is?